The UFL Gambling Podcast Week 2 Reaction Show on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 different states. Head to cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pickup for a chance to win a uh, hundred times the amount of money you enter in uh, college basketball, UFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, yes, and much more. Sign up with the promo code TCE SGPN to get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by AVO. Yes, uh, the premier arbitrage sports betting tool, AVO. Use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit. Access their platform for free, arbs versus odds.com. Once again, that's at arbs versus odds.com. Plus, in honor of the Masters Week, the Golf Gambling Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sports gambling podcast.com slash masters at sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, this is Pac Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Gambling podcast, uh, week two reaction show episode. Boy, make sure you get on over to you can watch this show, uh, youtube.com slash the UFL gambler. I'm sorry, you youtube.com slash at the UFL gambling pod. I always mess this up. Uh, we're also on Twitter at UFL gambling pod. It's been a, another week of action. We're gonna break it all down. Perhaps you're wondering who the hell you're listening to. And that's fair. My name is Kobe Swinging Database Dad, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. Uh, I think Tide Turney, I see as I remember. I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of, tur- it's easy to see a tide turn. Uh, did I say those words? <laughs> Woo! Fun week of action. I got some complaints. It's me. Okay? <laughs> I got them loaded. I got them locked, loaded, and ready to go. Uh, I am joined by my co-host, the host of the Bottom Line Bombs podcast. Get on over there. Check out that podcast. Uh, they call him the man in the box, AKA the bet detective. Give it up for CJ Sullivan. How you doing, buddy? All right. Not bad. What's up fellas. A, uh, little different week two than week one. Not the gravy train of success as things kind of settled. UFL was back on their bullshit this weekend. If you will, oh, the alternative football. I, I feel like they were, I really feel like they were. And also we are joined by a third man in the booth. He is the host mm-hmm. of the old fashioned football podcast and the NFL gambling podcast. So make sure you get on over there, subscribe to those, uh, give it up for Justin Mark, AKA J Mark. How you doing buddy? I'm not surprised you have some stuff to complain about. There was some really questionable stuff going on, whether it was coaching, refereeing, uh, just everything. So I'm not, I have complaints. So I'm definitely mm-hmm. not surprised that you have complaints. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, uh, I'll bring that up later. Um, it just questionable stuff uh, going on. Look, and, and we, we love spring football. We don't want to see spring football go away ever. But at the same time, it's our job to call out bullshit when we see it. And uh, uh, we got, we got a lot to talk about. Let's jump into uh, the first game that happened here. Um, But before we do that, I want to tell you that you're listening to the sports gambling podcast network. And this is the UFL gambling podcast and it's master's week. So check out the golf gambling podcast. And those guys are giving away a free tailor-made spider X Potter. Yes. 
for free. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. Check that thing out. And uh, attention, attention, folks in San Diego, California. Sean Stack of the Money Green and Ryan Real Manning Kramer are going to be uh, going to San Diego to a special circus sports watch party starting Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. at Swing Social. Free drinks for anyone wearing Cubs or Padres gear. So come grab a cocktail and say what's up to the guys uh, over in, in the whale's vagina, San Diego. All right. We're back on the UFL mm-hmm. gambling podcast. And uh, look, game one was to me. I have a hard time with game one. I'm sure the fans, the lay fans, I, I, I just don't think I see parallel with the average person who watches football. <laughs> Cause I, I don't think this game it's, it was cheap to me. It was cheap. Um, I don't like the fourth and 12 rule. No, I don't think San Antonio. Now I, I, I'll, I'll talk shit to me about Memphis all day because to me in these rules with this league, you need to be more aggressive. You're at the fucking yeah. two yard line on a fourth and two. You're kicking field goals. Uh, in my opinion, like when you have a league with nine points, you can score nine points each possession, and then you can go for a fourth and twelve. You have to be more aggressive. Yeah, but I still, as someone that loves football, that played football, that just I I fucking don't think San Antonio should have had any business winning this game. I thought it was a questionable call, and that's my problem too with the replay. If you're replaying every play. Is it me or is it ESPN that does a really bad job on replays? I feel like Fox gives you better replays. And I, I, you know, I caught this game for a second time on Sunday morning. I watched it on, on, on Saturday, but Sunday morning I was, you know, uh, up early doing some stuff and I had it, had it on here in the office. They don't ever show us a good look to me. And this is what I brought up here. This is the fourth and 12. I went frame by frame. That is the first frame that we get now. I don't know if that's a first down and they don't even like really talk about it. Like I, they didn't talk about it enough where it's, that's a huge play in the game. Yeah. Well, it is the game and it just doesn't make sense to me that you would not. And, and there was also a play in, in, in another game that we'll talk about where it's a huge play and to not talk about it or give us a honest replay. I, it almost I feels like you're yeah. cheating the game. Yeah, it was definitely close if he got it or not. I don't understand why it's only fourth and twelve to begin with. Yeah, that's ridiculous too. And I, I argued with, you know, even our, our own editor, shout out to Adam Pelletier, who's a great guy, knows no spring football as good yeah. as any. But he's a good he's a good editor. Keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I, look, I, I just don't like gimmicks. And to me, it's a gimmick. It's a I don't. I, I don't mind TV switching. Ratings. Yeah, I don't mind yeah. switching it up. But it's got to be harder than fourth and twelve. Yeah, especially in today's yeah. game. I said fourth and twenty. It should be fourth and twenty. I don't mind that fourth and twenty. It, at the very minimum, fourth and fifteen. And why isn't it from the twenty two? It's at the twenty eight. They push it up further than the actual kickoff. Shouldn't it be from the same spot that you're actually? It should be. From? That's I don't, I, I, I don't like it. it. To me, it's like we're gonna do anything to make the t- like to make the game closer for TV and not who should win the fucking game. Yeah. Like the one team dominated the game. Now, yes, were they way too conservative, but they dominated the football game. Right. In my opinion, you shouldn't be able to just, oh, all of a sudden these rules are in favor. We can just steal the win. I think it's a little cheap. And I'll I'll say this when, when, because you're given the choice, do you want the fourth and 12 or an onside kick? No one in their right mind is going to choose onside kick. That's how you know it's that easy. That's why you make it fourth and 20 or for for, where's an actual decision. Ah, we'll try the kick from the 40 or whatever. There was also a 15 yard penalty on the score Mm -hmm. uh, on a tackle that where they threw it to the, the, the receiver on the bottom of the screen and he gets tackled at like the 15 yard line or, or 20 yard line. And they call a 15 yard for, for a hit that was, awful. It was just an awful call. It's like, what is he supposed to fucking do it? I don't know, man. I this like, I had a hard time with this game specifically. I thought out of the four, this was the worst game. Uh, it was an, it was an amazing result for people that had plus two and a half and the under, it was such a needle to thread where they could oh, lose out yeah. where they lost outright and downing the two point conversion. Right. Interesting tactic. Penalty. Incredible. Oh, that made me mad. J Mark, J Mark, and J Mark in the Slack chat, not happy with all these ridiculous <laughs> covers and knees being taken. Yeah, oh, come on, let's what not be so conservative in good sports or basically being pansies, thinking we're gonna maybe turn the ball over. Believe in your right. team. 
Um, just to kind of with the onside kick and the conversion there that you're talking about watching it live. It looked like he got it. I know it was very close, but it happened so fast that he caught it and got pushed. Well, they back. were late yeah. to, to the, the but, bad camera work. They were late yeah, uh, right. going to it. So he might've but, got it. But yeah. to me, the first frame says he didn't get it. How do you not dive deeper into that play when it's sure. such a pivotal play? And I they agree. have the tech and they have the new chip technology. They didn't right? show us the chip. They didn't yeah. show us the chip. That, I was yeah. confused by that. At least show that that can just prove it. They here's where the chip went, you know. So he got the first. I also don't know who came up with fourth and twelve. Like, how do you come I mean? up with and the XFL game? was fourth and fifteen last year, right? I'm not crazy. I, I think remember. it was I think definitely it was fourth and fifteen. I think it was fourth and twelve. I think I think the USFL might have had it fourth and fifteen, right? He's no, just I saying thought that the XFL was good. better, but <laughs> dude, yeah, I mean, and, and I, don't I know, even and, care. And, the USF, and the USFL probably would have ran the ball to pick up that fifteen as well, because <laughs> that's, that's true. What they do, and, there. And, and we can talk about that because this, this, this tells me. I know we have a short sample size of eight games, but mm -hmm. uh, first off, if you rush for a hundred yards, teams were or undefeated before this game, this particular game. At uh, at the the team that rushed for a hundred yards, you know, yeah. there's, believe it or not, there's never been where both teams <laughs> rush for a hundred yards. Um, uh, we're, we're they're four and one now. They were four and zero, oh, and uh, you know, I mean, dude, this game had. I know the yardage at the end tells you that uh, San Antonio has more yards. Part of it being this fourth and twelve, uh, and and an extra possession. But I just I thought this game was cheap to me. I thought it was, I understand that they were conservative, but I just think from a viewing standpoint, I wasn't very satisfied with the product. <laughs> I just well, think like, yeah, like for sure. And dominated we were, the fucking game, dude. You're like yeah. that's like you, you, you watch games before where a team's up like 30 to nothing. Right. And there's no way that they can do that. Come back, you know, for the most part. Listen, that, it was a that's it was what a this should yeah. have been in a way, you know, it was, like it was a complete league rule loss. But at the same time, you said it, you said it too. I mean, they they made their own. They well, they, they have to they, be they smarter. Allowed, they allowed them to be in that position to get caught like that. They didn't. Dude, they didn't put them away he, when they should have. The same thing they did week one. Well, they John, should have, John, they should have won that game going away too, and they just they just played the you know there's not getting the results. Well, John DeFlippo's. I think he's using NFL logic, or I don't even think college logic makes sense to this. With the, when you have the nine point scoring, you need to think way more outside of the fucking box in the fourth mm -hmm. and 12 to me, you're up. I think they were up like what it was like 13 to nothing, I think. And they, uh, then 16, they're, not they're up 16, well, they, well, they, but no, but they no elected point. to kick a field oh, with right, two right. yard line. And you're like, what is Who that cares? really doing? What is yeah. that really doing? You know, exactly. like you gotta, you gotta fucking, you gotta try to score in my opinion. And they had some bad execution just in general inside the 10 all game. Yeah. They but uh, yeah, to me, it should be fourth and 20 because even fourth and 15, the way that they thought throw pass interference and stuff or defensive holding or roughing the, the, the quarterback, you need to make it. So your odds are even less, you know, um, I know that, and I don't even think you should be able to get an automatic first down. I think it should be like spot foul unless it's beyond 20 yards. Sure. Um, but I don't know. I was, I was kind of bummed out at that game. I, I just thought it's, it was cheap. The penalty to give them a 15 yards. It just seemed like it just seemed like they were doing everything to help them. And then thus not sh seeing the chip made me think I, I, could, I put my tin foil hat on and I was like, what the fuck is this? You know? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, shout out to, I mean, San Antonio's offense was firing final couple of minutes. They were they, ass, they had eight yards at halftime, eight fucking yards at halftime. Never a doubt. Never doubt with uncle, uncle with Grandpa Wade and the boys, he was shocked as anyone. They had to tell him they won. Well, what do we do? We won, all right? <laughs> Son of a bum. Um. Anyway, uh, the next game we jump on over to what it was it the Renegades and the Battle Hawks on this game. Look, I know I hate the little battle dome there, but a shout out to forty thousand fans showing up. Forty thousand. Forty. The exact opposite of that Memphis game. Yeah. <laughs> Memphis Memphis doesn't know they have a football team, I don't think. Actually, the My worst was God. Ford. Ford Field had the worst turnout, right? I think I read that out of all four. There but was yeah. eight thousand seven hundred at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Um just call that, it the Liberty Bowl. Don't do that right. corporate shit. You know what I mean? That's what they listed at least. Uh forty thousand, yeah. of course, but um 
Yeah, the other the other one that looked uh the Memphis, Ford Field one was 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 the lowest. Yeah. Ever, at least that Me- Memphis read. looked pretty bad though, for sure. It did. When they, when they, one they, side of the field. Yeah. Oh my God. And, and, I think I think Ford Field was more spread out. So it looked it, it gave you the illusion. Yes. Of, Me- of Memphis, there's nowhere to hide. That's just yeah. empty seats. Yeah. And uh for you listen to Moose Johnson talk about it, it is not good. He's like, Yeah, it's not where we want it to be, but you know. We had a late schedule, he said. TV slots not preferred. Uh, we went up against the women's basketball game. Not good. All right. If you're <laughs> if you're worried about going against the women's basketball, yeah, we got Masters next week. Uh, let's we got see. some uh, mash <laughs> reruns going on. You know, yeah. you can't put it. Man, it still charts well. It still yeah, charts they, well, guys. They ran a Baywatch um, marathon, yeah, I yeah. think, on the CW. And, and, and you know, the big bouncing tits are always going to outshine yeah. us. Um, There's a Smallville episode, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, this game was fun. This was a fun game to watch. As predicted, and- the best game of the weekend. I said, which ones you want to watch? This is the one at the, the Battle Hawk Dome. Uh, Arlington, there's a lot of bad, there's a lot, whatever. Bad calls, Tony Meatballs. Oh, <laughs> Tony Meatball did his best to lose this, by the way. Oh fourth and God. fourth and like in literally like three inches. They punt the ball. They're so lucky they didn't lose this game. I can't take it. I can't take Tony Meatballs. And, and I gotta be honest. I think I have a new. I appreciate it because there's forty thousand some fans showing up there, but uh, the amount of uh, in in the Reddit channel, the amount of uh, arguing, all these fucking Battlehawk fans can fuck off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. We should have led with that, Colby and his multiple personalities, and he might be Colby, CJ, and J Mark. He might be all of us. Yeah, I mean, what's yeah. going on? And what's going on? Yeah, the Reddit so thread, Jay Mark. Let, let me Reddit. explain what happened right. at at uh, so hear. early Saturday morning. I wake up. Mm-hmm. Jay Mark has sent me this link to uh, uh, Reddit, <laughs> and yeah. I respond on my phone. But I had not charged. I have a child, and I was yeah. just up weird hours. I did not. My my life's not as planned as it was before. So I my phone was like literally on fucking the you know one percent. Mm-hmm. Essentially, so I'm responding to this uh, as I'm at breakfast. Uh, my my wife's computer stays pretty much by the breakfast table, right downstairs in my apartment, and I I'm responding and I go fuck, battery uh, battery's out on my phone. So I quickly my wife's computer was was before was my computer, right? So it it uh, it it has the slack there. You know what I mean? So I jump into Slack, click on the same article and I don't realize that I'm on her Reddit name. Right. So (laughs) I then comment again and then everyone's thinking I'm sitting over here and everyone thinks all three of us, it's all J Mark. That's, that's what's the funniest part is everyone's blaming J Mark. Um, (laughs) But, but then I deleted it right away, but of course they didn't let, let me, uh, yeah. you know, have that well, one because now this I, is what they were—they're yeah. were attacking our power rankings. Is that what's going yeah. on? Okay. Even funnier, even funnier is like, who cares if it was? You know, I mean, it wasn't yeah. in this scenario, but I'm just saying. I was responding. It's like, okay, I, look, I'm telling you the truth, but I don't really give a fuck if you believe me or not. What are we so, doing here? You know, I like, like the person that was at least two people have said they're Colby. <laughs> 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 You forgot what burner account you're under. You and Kevin Durant, the same, trying to protect. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this: watching account. the Battle Hawks t- uh, uh, win. Yeah, I still don't think they're sniffing the top of the league. Well, I thought. Oh. Now I will say this, and uh, Maceo Durant, we are a huge fan of him at Duke. Me and my brother, mm. and I have always wondered why he didn't get more burn in this league. Even last yeah. year, it's like they don't give him enough reps. Um, he showed out and they rushed for over a hundred yards, Tony meatball. And for me, they've been playing pussy ball for the past like year and a half. If they can sustain that, you can make me a believer in the battle Hawks for sure. And shout out to Marcel Aitman who made my DFS line. Oh, he, great. He, he won't be priced like that anymore. I'll tell you that after bo- both weeks he's had, he's been yeah. like, their, their number one. Uh, he's been great. And uh, Arlington, you shout out to you, Colby for taking Arlington plus the points. Um, Another knee taking a field goal, Tony Meatballs at the end instead of going for the touchdown. But Arlington was still the they right should have lost because of that decision. Yeah. In Arlington, my opinion, like yeah. Arlington misses the field goal, and then that third down. Say what you want about Perez, that ball was on the money. That yeah. ball was on the fucking money. It should have been caught. You know, I tell you what, what 
an amazing, amazing extra point trick plays drawn up by Stoops. But why for one? Why are you doing this for one point? Like if you're doing yeah. double reverse passes for like <laughs> do that for a three pointer or a two pointer. And, and, and let's you're doing be this honest. from a two yards out. What do we do? What are we doing here? Let's be There's honest. I, I, I think Perez is a good quarterback, but I you got to get Lindsey Scott in the game more. You got to hmm. you got to call Skip Holtz and 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 just let him tell you about how to use two quarterbacks successfully. Lindsey Scott's an electric quarterback that I think could really be a pain in the ass to game plan for. If you're, especially if you're game planning for Perez, yeah. who's just your statue quarterback, you know what I mean? Uh, J Mark, what'd you make of this game? Yeah, he's way better than Perez. <laughs> just had to throw that in there. Of course, Perez played good though. I thought, I thought he yeah, played good. He, did, yeah. he did have a good yeah. game. He had another clean game for the most part. I mean, he was pretty accurate. Um, yeah, this was the second game in a row where the last play or the last seconds there, they could have got my cover. Mm -hmm. uh, they decide to kneel it and kick the field goal. So I'm throwing things and I think, I think is like they won or aren't, aren't you rooting for them to win? <laughs> like, no, I'm rooting for them to fucking cover. Come on. Right. Was uh, this the same cover. one too, though, that didn't look at a replay. I'm trying, I'm getting my games confused between this and the next one. Well, I'll I tell you what, was they, a, there was a horrible interference, right? They didn't go to replay because meatball was out of challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Pereira, Pereira's like, yeah, no, that's that's a bad call. Too bad he doesn't have a challenge. We definitely would reverse that. That's a horrible call well, by that. Here's my problem. Can do. Meat, meat, meatball blew it literally the play before because he wanted to see if it was a backward pass. It wasn't even close to a backward pass. Yeah, anyone, how how can he not correct that? This is this is where I'm confused about all this. How can he not correct that? And then we watch Birmingham, Michigan, and for no reason, Blandino corrects a, a, a false start in a pivotal play. I don't understand that, that that the consistency thing is like if you guys are gonna play God, yeah, then you play God every like so it's it's only for false starts. It's not for other penalties. It just doesn't make sense to me, wasn't it? What's that? Yeah, that was that was official challenge. That was a that challenge. That's they, why that but my point here. is is if you right. can go back, that no one challenged that false start. He just said, oh, you know, I think we got a false start, and it was a false start. But yeah. I don't understand how you can do that, but then on another situation, just not look at it and say, Hey, we're in the wrong here. Who cares about if he has a challenge? Let's just correct this. Yeah. Well, they're not going to do that. They have to do the challenge system and unless it's uh, the Dino Blandino command center or the military, well, that's, I mean, but, but that's Army what I'm saying. I don't understand it then the I mean, army command center, right? Plenty of talk from that. Jesus Christ. But no one challenged the false start. No, they wound up challenging. Are you talking about that? Yeah, week I think one? it was challenged. It was challenged. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? I thought that he just did it. Well, they challenged. No, they challenged it after a long extended break because there was that fight that is the spitting and all that and the and the penalties and then um, so while it happened, like well, well, while we're at it, might as well challenge and that's when they do it. You have to, you have to, you do have to have the challenge. Huh? I didn't. I maybe uh, I missed that. I thought that I thought that he just looked at it. I didn't think they challenged it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll. I'm gonna either do. Way. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get the bet detective on the case of that one. But yeah, uh, e either way, meatballs blew it as much as he possibly could by not having that challenge. <laughs> oh, dude, how do you not go for that fourth down? How do you not? It was like it, it wasn't even that far. Like it wasn't even in your own territory. It's like midfield. It's like yeah. you're talking this much, this much, mm -hmm. and you don't go for it. Um, J Mark, what'd you make of the game in general? Yeah, I mean, overall, I was disappointed. I, I thought the Battle Hawks were going to get back home and just really rout uh, Arlington, who is showing that they're an okay team. I still don't think they're a power team by any means, though, and the Battle Hawks are supposed to be, and mm -hmm. I just don't think they're there this year. Um, I, I think that the defense is lacking. The, the run game finally showed up, and it didn't make a difference of letting them pull away. Uh, overall, just being back at home, it was disappointing effort, I think. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the over love for AJ McCarron's look, I have nothing against this guy, but it kind of makes me hate him. <laughs> like every announcer said he could have, he could have played in the NFL. Yeah. Like uh, he also could have got cut in the NFL. We didn't see that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a lot of quarterbacks get cut. That's what I'm saying. What are you talking? <laughs> like they were building it. Like he's like the second string quarterback. And you know he turned down all this money. To, it was like, no, this guy was fighting for a roster spot, and there yeah. was uncertainty, and that's why he did it. That was certainty. <laughs> Starting in the XFL was certainty, and and it, I, I just thought they might have uh, blown that up a little bit out of proportion, in my opinion. Um, but these BattleHawk fans, man, just coming for us here. I like I'm I, I like how they're passionate. I like how they're passionate. 
Um, but at the same time, uh, them thinking that they, I love the guy's logic of like uh, in, in the Reddit channels of like, that was a gimmick, Michigan. Uh, you know, they made a 64 yard field goal. And I go, well, he made it twice. He's two yeah. and oh. And they ask, guess what? This week he made a 62 yarder. He's, He's actually amazing. three for three and 60 plus yard field goals. I don't think it's a gimmick anymore. And also, uh, they needed two fourth down. Anyone that watched the Michigan game knew Michigan dominated the fucking line of scrimmage. Yes, they 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 seem to suck and keep teams in in the game. They're still good, but they they're shitty good. Mm. Um, anyway, we could have we could have done a whole show on some of those Reddit comments. That ah, those bring it all. Hilarious. Bring it all. The fucking <laughs> jackasses. One guy's like, uh, I saw you respond say, I don't know. Listen to the show. He goes, I will certainly not. I don't give a fuck, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not going to lose any sleep here, buddy. Um, but uh, real yeah. quick, real quick about Jake Bates. I know that's the next game we're going on to though. Um, only once in NFL history as a kicker made 60 yard plus field goals in consecutive weeks. That of course was Brett Marr. The Dallas guy was in 2019, but wow. uh, I would have yeah, not I, gotten that right. I thought I, I would have been like Jason Elam or Matt Prater right. or something. Yeah. Justin Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Point, point, I'll be shocked if my man, Roy Hobbs, Jake Bates is not in the league. Uh, oh no. I think come summer. He solidified it. He solidified it, especially with how many uh, domes there are too. Cause I want to see him be able to kick this somewhere else, but the NFL's half domes anyway, so why not? Um uh I want to see him make a 62 yarder though at the Liberty Bowl though, or or at Aldi or something like that. The rice, the rice bowl. Um all right, folks. Well, uh look, before we get to the next two games, I want to tell you that the UFL gambling podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 different states. P2P social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. Plus, they got a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network, so to speak. Uh Cut offers lower VIG and fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets and cut handles the payment side of things, so you never have to chase oh Roger down in the streets for that cash he's got. You've been waiting in an Astro van for 12 hours, waiting for him to come out of his mom's house so you can break his fucking jaw. No, you don't have to do that, all right? Uh, download the Cut app today or head to Cut.com, K-U-T-T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, which now has UFL. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win up to a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pickup entry, folks. Uh, what are you doing? Sign up with the promo code uh, TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pickup special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pickup special. And remember, they have UFL action, folks. Get on over there and check that out. All right, we are back, and uh, now we jump into the Stallions, Panthers. Man, you know, you dive into the stat sheet, you would think the Stallions won by 20. But this uh this Panthers team, hmm. A, they completed a, a A, they had a passing touchdown, which is always rare, and especially that, like a 70 yard passing touchdown, uh, which is extremely rare. Um, but uh man, you gotta think if they had if they had just go out and try to get DeAndre Johnson, why I got so many complaints with, with uh, Mike Nolan here. Like, what are you doing? Do you know, like EJ Perry's <laughs> attributes? I will. <laughs> I don't he understand was... it. Yeah. Like what, what are you trying to accomplish here? You're trying to make this guy fucking Dan Marino, like dro- dropping him back there that many times. It's not his game. He, I understand. Like they also did a great job bottling up the run, which was Birmingham's defensive line, by the way. Uh, that's the best defensive line in the league. Maybe too. Um, they got after it. I did not. I thought Michigan would run for more than 47 yards, um, but let's not throw the ball 34 times with EJ Perry. I, I don't think you'll ever win a game throwing the ball 34 times with EJ Perry. What in the hell is that? Now they still almost, they had their chances. They were in this game, mm. but 34 passing attempts with the shittiest quarterback in the league. 
I know. I know. He was he was so bad. I will say this: the first couple series were really bad, like skipping passes like that. Then he started getting in rhythm. He drove him downfield. He had him in a nice place, and they got an unfortunate interception with a tip ball to line. The ball popped up, and then they pulled him. I think at the wrong time. This whole league loves this is in love with the two quarterback system, where I feel like they're forcing it a lot. Not not that Perry doesn't ever not to be deserved to be benched. I mean, I can get that, you know. But they didn't well, have Edlin only and, threw one pass. I know. <laughs> And then Perry threw the deep ball, and then like and he didn't run enough either for what he does. But he is so bad, and that's a shame because he's the only thing really holding. Dude, this team the back. whole team is good. It's just that's what I'm saying. But they have access to free agents. Yeah, like or you could, you know, this is the UFL. They got a history of rigging trades. Go get Lindsey Scott. Go for, get Luis for a Perez. Team. Yeah, go get Luis Perez. Let's win. Let's run it back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean, uh, and I think we do need to talk about. The Stallions are so much better than any team in this league. Now, granted, they struggled passing the ball a little bit. 13 to yeah. 27 as a collective uh, between him, Martinez and Corral. Just 5.2 yards of completion with a pick. Terrible red zone offense. I know Skip Skip Holtz highlighted that. But how about this? Uh, they had 160 plus yards on the ground. I think uh, altogether it was uh, yeah 161. 4.9 yards a carry against what we think is the best defense in the league. God damn, the Stallions are good. They're better than all. They're they're just way better than the rest mm. of the league, in my opinion. Like, uh, yeah, Can they should they, they should have yeah. won by a lot more. Well, the Panthers, the Panthers do though. They 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 play. Close they muck to the, it up. They do muck it up, and it's hard, it's hard to blow them out, you know. And they had a, they did have a chance to win this game. And this line actually this line actually went off at seven. So if you had that late number, good for you for getting the push. Uh, Here's the thing: I I think they could win with EJ Perry if they just didn't pass that many times. Like if you yeah. just try running more. Quarterback powers. We talked about it. Yeah, or just uh, the, the the option read. Can I say something real quick about the the announcers in this game were tilting me as well. I was mm-hmm. on the I was on the under, and I know XFL were and along with every other sport, embracing gambling as much as possible. We are a gambling show on a gambling network, but we know how to talk about gambling. <laughs> I hate when they're the announcers are forced to talk about gambling and they have no idea how to do it. And they have they have Stormy there on the sideline. She knows how to do it. You know, she's a pro. Let her handle it. Yeah. I don't need this guy in the middle of the game saying under looking good. Under's looking real good after the end of the first quarter. Next, you know, explosion of points in the second quarter. Over's looking good. Over's <laughs> looking. That's what he did. He switched it right up. Like, you motherfucker. I'm on the under. Stop jinxing it. That's a real thing. You're the goddamn announcer. You're pushing it into the world. And then he goes right back to, oh, looks like the under's going to come in around the, on the fourth quarter. Shut the fuck up. Right when EJ Perry's about to drive and put in overtime. And then the over hits. Yeah, I, I was fifteen fat. yard penalties. I'll tell you this though, Michigan with that kicker, I love them. I don't know. Like to me, this is impressive that they only lost by seven. Like you look at the stat sheet, they should have lost by twenty, but they're able to like come up with like drives where they have four yards and make it make a sixty five yard field goal. <laughs> you know where, I mean? Like J Mark, where did he play soccer at? Uh, I don't know. I have to look that up. Was it at a college? Did the did that not have a football team? Did the coach no, not? No, I thought he was did at the coach Arkansas. Not hear about did this he go guy? To Arkansas? I, mean, I think he went to Arkansas. Well, what the fuck's going on? Where's Houston Nut at? Is he? Can he? Can we get a little, someone <laughs> over there and say, "Hey, I, I heard a guy's kicking a ball seventy yards. Can we get him over to just you know? We, we can we just borrow him for a Saturday? That's all yeah. we got to do. I mean, um, my God, this guy hasn't had an attempted a kick since high school. And he's the greatest, on? Jake Bates. Yeah. Arkansas, it, Texas State, and Jack- Central Arkansas. Jesus Christ. Why is he not kicking on footballs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say this right now. It gives me confidence though that Michigan go moving forward can still be a player in this league. Mm. Like, I don't think they're a, a championship contender, but I think like this is a playoff team with that defense and the fact that they can kick like that. It's like oh. why don't, that's why you don't throw the ball thirty four times with EJ Perry. That's the one concerning thing. Is like if you just play, you want to talk about playing super conservative. They should be the team playing super conservative. It shouldn't be the showboats. It should be Michigan just saying, oh no, let's just run the ball, kick, kick us. Like but the way the kick return set up, which I love their kick return. Yeah, is you can almost make a you can almost get three points on every fucking possession with this guy. You know I what I know. mean? Like absolutely. Or, it's like, are you going to be like EJ Perry? If we run the ball five times here, we will be in field goal range. All right. Yeah. yeah. They should do a Jim Trestle style. Yeah. Punch, it, it, field goals, positions, sweater vests. Their defense is so good. 
that yeah. you're not going to score that many points right. against them. Um, really I, sweater vested up, you know. I love how the coach asked him, "62, do you want to do it?" Like, yeah, what, yeah. What are you going to say? No. No. <laughs> Good man. I, yeah, to be honest with you, right I, I already took my shoes off, like, Coach. I don't really want to. That was just hilarious to me. It's 62. Yeah. Do you want that, do you want that, it? Do you want to do it? Good, no, that, man. We good? We good on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need to learn also. Like it's like the U, the UFL's never been to a nightclub before. Uh, or you know <laughs> I think the nightclub of the line, you know, you ever been to a nightclub where they there's this big ass line out front. You come inside and there's six people. You know what I mean? Like you wait in that line, you, you know, like, where the fuck there was a big ass line. Uh, this is why Ford field and, and look, I love the Liberty bowl too, but it might be a little too big for, for, for year one. Right. Um, no, like it's like stand up, CJ. Like if I, if I did a show at Madison square garden, uh, my friends, I'd have 12 friends show up Yeah, and it would look horrible on fucking TV. Right. If I did a show at the dive bar down the street, it, it could look great. From yeah. from a visual point of view, know your venue. Yes, that hurts them more than it helps them because your local people, if they see that it's something about that, if they see like Aldi Field being packed, I have friends in D.C. that aren't even you know football fans that say, "Hey, that looks like a good time. Let's go fucking do that." Right. That, it's 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 like marketing one hundred and one. What the fuck are you doing with with Ford Field and and, and even the Liberty Bowl and maybe even the Rice Bowl? Like you should target MLS stadiums or small ass college stadiums or high school stadiums. Texas has some like ridiculous high school stadiums. That's why I say that. Uh, am I wrong, J Mark? No, I hundred percent correct. Um, last thing I want to say about this game. I know we're a little short on time. The, I walked away. I know that the Stallions won this game. We expected them to win this game. I said they're going to shut down the run and, hey, beat us with EJ Perry. And maybe that's why they abandoned the run too soon, yeah. but the run wasn't working. Mm -hmm. um, but I walked away just more impressed with this Michigan team. I mean, they yeah. if they, they hung around with the Stallions, who I think we all agree is by far the best team in this league, and they hung around with they them. They shut them down and in the red really, zone. Yeah, well, I was really once, impressed. Once, like, spacing, like, the spacing went away, like in the red zone when the field gets smaller, mm -hmm. like they didn't have much success, especially on the line of scrimmage. Um, Alfred 44 says, damn, I missed the showboats rigged uh, game recap. Um, <laughs> all right, let's talk about the, f the, the, the final game. Uh, whew, this game was uh, a little wacky, but they DC, <laughs> uh, the, the roughnecks beat, uh, I'm sorry. The defenders beat the roughnecks 23 to 18 at Aldi field. DC remains undefeated at Aldi field in the three seasons we've had of XFL slash UFL action. Uh, both teams. Now I'll say this. They found a blessing in disguise. Quentin storm in Normandy beach. Uh, oh wait, no, no, no. That was Reed's in it. Yeah. Wait, hold on. That, that was Guantanamo Bay, right? Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. I always, they're both Tennessee quarterbacks. So I always get them confused. Um, Reed Senate coming in, looking, looking like the next Jeff Hostetler in there. Uh, both teams did struggle. The, the, the defenders had uh, 82 yards rushing and, and 3.2 yards of rush. Still very concerned about their offensive line. Roughnecks even worse, 50 yards on the ground. But at least Senate that like once they made that transition to Senate, to me the offense went looked much better. Uh, DC blocked a punt early in this game. Uh, also a, a key pivotal strip fumble. Um, they probably had no business winning this game, but the, we could, we pushed uh, the over hit for us and, uh, or at least for me, I, I took the over. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what you guys did, but uh, I, I, I kind of came away thinking these are the two worst teams in the league. Uh, that pick six was a, uh, you can't, you know, it wasn't good. Wasn't ideal way to start the game. <laughs> You know, especially when I was on DC big. Uh, I like them. Maybe I like St. Louis and DC is my two favorite plays. And I was on DC a lot heavy, especially when St. Louis didn't cover and that pick six happened, but you can't complain too much. Cause that's what happens in this league, especially when you have uh, J Mark's favorite quarterback, Jordan Tamu. That's what he does. Um, but they did move the ball. Well, then cash in is great. Uh, I, I was impressed with the way DC came back about it. Uh, the miracle push happened with the, uh, I'm, I am out on Reggie Barlow though. A lot of going, a lot of, I mean, what in the fuck is he doing? Yeah. Yeah. There, there were some questionable moments, but you can we'll have a bad coaching game too. We'll you can have a bad off, coaching right. game too. Start off 
going for two when he scored a touchdown to go up three. I'm like, fuck, we're going to, you know, he's just going to go for one here and go for four. Oh, that helped what, for the cover. It's what he, it's or for what the push. He, no shit, it did. Well, yeah. at that point, why as well go? Why as well go for three? Let's get the win if we're doing this. <laughs> I mean, what are they doing going for two when you, all you needed was the one, make it a non field goal game? Oh, and the man it, coverage by Greg Williams on the final play of the game, like all out blitz, <laughs> guys wide open. Oh, I love it. I touchdown. love it. But I mean, <laughs> hilarious. And then of course the timeout before the two minute warning, bailing them out. They both coaches were idiots. And he's a he's a. <laughs> He said, well, what do we call timeout? No, they, they did. All right, great. We got a timeout. And he almost <laughs> gifted him the game that way. Um, I defended Barlow as the best coach in the league. I, I, I'm i out. I can't defend him anymore. <laughs> that, that was Skip insane. by far, man. Right. That was insane but, what he was doing with the clock management there. I still think he's one of the better coaches. I still think he's one of the better the coaches. As far one as the motivating the players in yeah. that far, sure. Yeah, but now as far as uh, not being better than an eight-year-old playing Madden as far as game control, <laughs> clock control. <laughs> Um, J Mark, what'd you make of this one? First of all, shout out to my new favorite fan, drunken Irishman, Tom O'Blows. I agree. Um, I've been <laughs> Dude, that old line years. sucks too, though, man. That yeah. old line sucks. Like, <laughs> yeah, they do. DC is weird to watch this year. You know, you see a lot of uh, a lot of defenses that run like a cover two, and it's like the bend don't break. We'll give them mm-hmm. everything between the twenties. I feel like DC's offense is the opposite. It's like they move the ball great up to the twenty yard line, and right. then they fucking suck. They can't do anything with it. I think um, a lot of that. I think a lot of that's missing Abram Smith though, too. Because yeah, Smith, they don't have anybody that really pops on offense. Abram man. Smith used to cash in once they were inside of twenty and ten. Like True. he was like their, he was like yeah. that uh, Derrick Henry style for them almost. Yeah, but yeah, and then the the timeout didn't make any mm. sense. I don't understand Good why God. you call it. Um, I, I don't know. I wasn't impressed with either of these teams. I was impressed with how Reed Sennett came in and played. Uh, shout out to an Iowa guy. I uh, grew up 30 minutes from here, so I got to give him some props. Yes. Um, but, He's been to that McDonald's. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> These teams, they just neither one looks really all that good. Uh, yeah. Roughnecks defense doesn't look bad, but again, that's it was against the defenders who they can't block anybody. So I don't know if you can evaluate their defense off this either. Uh, yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, although the Roughnecks defense, after watching Memphis kind of just do whatever they wanted to do almost against uh, San Antonio made me think that maybe the roughnecks defense could be the second best in the league. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know. The stallions were super fucking impressive defensively too, yeah. but uh, folks, all right, we're going to get to our power rankings and get out of here. But before we do that, I want to tell you that uh, the UFL gambling podcast is brought to you by AVO. We're proud to partner up with AVO, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. If you're new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. The AVO tool uh, scans the sports books looking for discrepancies in the odds and then tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book to expect a profit. The tool is super easy to, to use and lightning fast as, as speed you know, it's such a big part of arbitrage sports betting. So uh, it's got that speed. Um, the best part is AVO is currently uh, free to use without restrictions. That's right. Completely free. You can get started today at arbs versus odds.com. That's uh, once again, a R B S versus odds.com. All right, folks, uh, UFL week three upon us. We got a show scheduled for Thursday and uh, I'm excited about this week's action, but like power rankings, more people to talk shit to me. Um, I'll be honest. My power rankings didn't move too much. You'll see here. Uh, at, at, at should we go from let, worst to first this time? Worst to first. However you want to do it. Works. Let's yeah. go worst to first. To me, at number eight is the well. It's the Houston Roughnecks. I yep. think you can make an argument though that it could be DC, but because with Senate moving forward, now get out of here with fucking DC yeah. number eight. <laughs> <laughs> People in the Reddit were all over here. You love the DC. There's uh, a lot of talk about the power ranks. I'll say this: the, a lot of shots at Dundee last year, though, legendarily ranking Houston dead last when they were undefeated. Not dead last, but down to down to pipe a little bit because you had vision. You said they hadn't played anyone. Watch when when real competition happens. Yeah, this is not based on like two and zero. Oh, you're two and zero. Oh, you got to uh, based on how you view the team. Yeah, right for yeah. sure. Um, and I think right now they're the worst team in the league, the Houston Roughnecks. Houston, but, uh, no problem. I think that's unanimous, right? Houston eight across Mark? the board. Yeah, yeah. I was also tempted to put DC down there, though. Oh, the drunk, are, drunken yeah. Irishman got a good point. They do get points for the beer snake. Yeah, come True. on. We know. And, we know. And, 
that home field will steal some wins. Probably it will steal some, some wins that probably they should, they, they shouldn't like get yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Well, they yeah. Won. All right, let's go. They could have won week one. I understand. They could have won week one and it's a transition and they're going to take a little while to get going here, but I mean, they're still Look, DC. Let's relax. Now. I'll make my case where I have them at seven and I, I I'm with you CJ though, that I don't really buy into the middle of this order. Yeah. But based on, you know, some of them with head to head wins, mm. I got to put DC at seven right now. I could DC be number four or five in no time. Sure. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm a little higher on DC, even though I knew it was gonna be the trouble coming out the gates for them. Um, Who do you have at seven? Seven. I have Memphis. I know. I mean, they, <laughs> I know they are, they're one and one. I didn't, I, 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 I was more, I was, their defense uh, was awesome until like what the final five minutes of the game. I was more impressed with their, uh, with their loss, obviously that's week. Then their win week one, to be honest with you, I, that was, I was kind of disappointed with that. Listen, I want to put San Antonio uh, below them. They almost the game have <laughs> never trailed this entire season until right. what, the final two seconds of that game. Yeah. Uh, uh, with that crowd, that whole atmosphere, everything about Memphis, I think uh, these are bad signs for teams that teams that should that, that should have so won both shitty games. uniforms. They should be wearing the red and silver. I don't, I don't you know like what any, I mean? The red and white. I don't like anything about this. They need more of that crime element in there, like you're saying, by that stadium. Um, I don't know. Someone's going on at the barbecue. These are these are signs I don't like. Team that, that they should have <laughs> won. They should have won both games going away, and they tr- and they try to lose them both, and they did. And they did lose. Wound up losing the one. Jay Mark, who you got at seven? Yeah, it's unfortunate we're on video. I, everybody probably saw me have to pick my jaw up off the floor. <laughs> show Jeez, Louise. I had the defenders at seven, too. I'm not impressed with them. Uh, maybe they do turn it around, but as of right now, not impressed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at number six for me, uh, unfortunately, I think this team is a lot better, and I don't think they're going to stay at number six. I got the Arlington Renegades. I still, after watching that Renegade Battle Hawk game, I think they'll beat the battle Hawks in Dallas or Arlington, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. And I also think they're capable of beating pretty much anyone in the league, not named Birmingham. Okay. So I, th- I think Arlington's probably for being winless. They had to go to the battle dome with that filthy arena with all those 40,000 fans. And then they got the Birmingham stallions. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being owned two there. Um, but that's where I have them. Well, who do you have at six CJ? Yeah, I mean, I have Arlington a lot higher. We'll get to them later. I have San Antonio at six. Um, I I would love. I wanted to put them at seven, but because they technically beat Memphis, I couldn't do it. That, that, uh, that's, I, I would agree with your assessment there. Like, if I if they were to play next week, right. I would take Arlington to beat them. It's yeah. just, it's just, it's tough right now to 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 say that. So. I'm going, uh, I'm going with Colby style. I don't care. Uh, that's how I have our, I mean, we'll talk about Arlington later. And I actually, I'm regretting it already. Not putting Memphis ahead of San Antonio because that bullshit thing last week, but out of respect for son of a bum being, being two and oh, um, I'll, I'll put them at six, even though I do not think they're a good team. Colby and I not doing a good job at uh, proving to the Reddit crowd that we're not the same person. I also <laughs> have the renegades at six. All right. Okay. At number five, I have the Battle Hawks. I yeah. think they're average. I think, you know, that home crowd helped them get that win. Tony Meatball certainly did not help them get that win. Um, and to me, they're average. They're the epitome of average so far in this league. But I'll tell you this if that run game starts going, you'll make me a believer. You got to be able to run the ball a little bit because to me, they have been the epitome of like a pussy team over the past two years. Um, but hey, middle of the pack right now. CJ, who do you got at five? Uh, five, I have Michigan. Uh, I like they. I think they're going to. I, I have a feeling there will be between five and four all year long, win or lose. That's where they're going to be. That's where their ceiling and their floor is for me, Michigan. I mean, they they cling on to you. They they won't get blown out and they won't blow you out. They're either going to win or lose by less than a score. Um, yeah, I like. I, I was impressed with that loss first, the best team in uh, the league, Birmingham uh, with that defense is obviously impressed week one with the uh, walk-off field goal victory. Um, that's what they are. They're tough. They're, their defense is legit. They were still popping, flying around there and they got the kicker. So give me uh yeah, Michigan of five. And, no. and you know, you can put that in permanent. <laughs> <laughs> J Mark, who you got? He got a five. 
Uh, I have the Battle Hawks as well. You guys will be surprised to know I almost put Renegades above them. That was a pathetic. I, me too. Me too. I think, yeah. I, like I said, I think it's very, very close to me. Um, yeah, at at four, I have uh, San Antonio. I still think they're a phony ass two and zero. Um, but I have them at number four. I don't have any faith in them. I think Arlington's actually a better team than them. We'll see over the whole season. I think Arlington is better than them, though. Uh, they're, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're you're correct, Colby. That's why I have Arlington four and San Antonio six in my power rankings because Arlington is a better team, and that's how these power rankings work. I learned this from you. What All are you right, doing? Let's, yeah, let's, what are you? Let's, come on, what are we doing here? I'm sick of this bullshit. Yeah. Give me, give me the Renegades. What are you afraid of? These fucking the Renegades, Renegades at four. You We're putting these- San Antonio at six with this bullshit. The the league's helping them out. Yeah. Um, what are you yeah. afraid of these Reddit what trolls coming? Shit. Yeah, log, log in your log in your go. wife's account and take them on. Let's go, <laughs> J Mark. What are you uh, What are you doing here at uh, number four? I'm not switching them. I still got the Brahmas. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they're going to ride high on this AJ Smith offense for a little bit. I was getting a little worried that maybe it was shut down already, but I think they got a couple more weeks of it. So yeah, I got the Brahmas there. All right, at uh, number three. I have the Memphis Showboats, and they're damn close to number two. Mm. They're damn close to number two with the way that defense was playing, but uh, too conservative a little bit, though, for me. Um, so I got the Showboats at number three. Take that, CJ. Uh, well, yeah, their defense are good. Who who have they played, though? Who's Memphis fucking? I mean, they, they played. They should beat San Antonio. They ran for fucking a bunch of. They dominated if, the whole game. They had eight yards at halftime. If it wasn't for them, they played the two worst teams in the league so far. Okay. They're Woo. my they're my Woo. Houston of, of last year for you. That's why I have Memphis at seven. And number three, uh, questionable, sure. But they have the pedigree in there. They have the talent. They'll eventually get there. I got DC at number three. Wow. J Mark, who do you got at three? Uh, I got the showboats as well. Mm. Um, speaking of DC, I forgot to mention it when we were recapping that game. Uh, if you can, uh, if you can do the uh, in-game betting, live betting, UFL is a great way to make money. I, I tweeted it out when they were plus one twenty on the money line. The yeah. over was at forty-eight and a half. I t- take the under. You can mm. make a lot of money doing the live betting, especially if your picks were off in uh, Saturday's games like mine. <laughs> I still have only gotten one game wrong on the ATS. So, I mean, I'm just feeling right. really good about it. And that was by a half a point in that Michigan game. Uh, look, we all have Birmingham number one, but number two, I have the Michigan Panthers. To me, they played good enough to me that I think they're the best defense and <laughs> the best special teams in the league. So, EJ Perry can't get worse. <laughs> yeah. He can only get better. And some of that is by less pass attempts. <laughs> Moving forward, I, I think they're the second best team thus far, two weeks in. I, I think they have the best defense in the league. I think Birmingham's close. And I think they have the best special teams in the league. That's got to mean something. So uh, give me the Panthers at number two. Mm. Take that, Sullivan. Who's your second? Who's who's at number two for you, CJ? I got St. Louis at number two. They have the highest ceiling, I think, of all <laughs> any of these teams. One and one. Is that you and Reddit? Was that you and Reddit talking <laughs> shit to me? That's uh, talking about playing to the Reddit crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when they when they when they were clicking, even in that game, when they went down and then bang a sixty yard touchdown and take the lead right back to them with McCarron. Like, there's no other teams that really can do that in this league. It just has that explosive offense that can, you know, now that now that the Danuch is out of the league, I got I have to cling on to the fucking baby boy of AJ <laughs> McCarron and doing it for the family. Oh so. God, here we I'll, go. I'll, I will take AJ McCarron over EJ Perry. That's for goddamn sure. Yeah. Well the problem is <laughs> the rest of their team's a bunch of pussies. All right. All right. And uh you take you take <laughs> Michigan. Michigan will fuck them up but we already saw it. We already solid uh no. j mark who's who's number two for you yeah i got the panthers uh like i said i walked away with that game very impressed by how they held their own against the stallions best red zone defense in the league too let's go uh we all have birmington number one this is the show yep. give cj sullivan a follow on twitter at cj sullivan underscore give j mark a follow on twitter at j mark football uh i'm on twitter at d colby d Check out uh, the old fashioned football podcast. Check out the bottom line bombs podcast. Check out the, uh, well, uh, all of our shit, the college experience, the college football experience, the college basketball experience. Uh, the CFL gambling podcast is going live this year. And uh, yeah, until, until uh, check out the sports gambling podcast every Friday from on VEASAN. So uh, 
Anyway, folks, until next time, this is the UFL Gambling Podcast. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Thank you.